strength must be built into the modern airplane to enable it to fly safely. The airplane must also be weatherproof and able to resist the harmful action of sunlight and moisture. On fabric covered types, material like this supports the entire weight of the airplane when in flight. As this fabric is now, however, it is neither sunproof, airtight, nor moisture proof. To finish the fabric and make it suitable for airplane use, it is first doped with a brush. Two coats are applied in this manner. These are sanded to make them smooth. The remaining coats of dope are applied with a spray gun. Some of these frayed coats are also sanded to ensure a smooth finished job. And here is the completed dope finish. There are no runs, scratches, or bare spots because the finisher knew the technique of applying dope. The right technique has to be used from the very start, beginning with the first coat. The first coat is brushed on with a well-filled brush. Because the surface is fairly large, a brush four to six inches wide is used. Notice how the brush is held close to the bristles. After the first coat has dried, undiluted clear dope is used to stick the wing tape to the fabric surface. The tape is smooth with the fingers to remove any air bubbles and also to ensure a good bond between the tape and the fabric surface. Right after smoothing, clear dope is brushed over the tape. This further bonds the two surfaces together. The tape is sometimes pre-saturated with dope and allowed to dry. Tape that has been treated in this manner is easier to stick to the fabric surface. Celluloid grommets are doped to the cover the same way as the wing tape. Accessories such as reinforcing patches, lacing tapes, and slide fasteners are also added at this time. To get the proper amount of dope in the brush, the brush is dipped to about one half to three quarters of its bristle length. The excess dope is removed by pressing the brush against the inside of the container. The brush should not be scraped on the edge of the container as dope will run down the outside and drop onto the work. A small board under the dope can will help prevent dope from dropping on the work. Any dope dropped on the surface should be picked up immediately with a nearly dry brush. If the dope is applied evenly and thoroughly, no bare spots or holidays will be left. Runs are sometimes caused by the dope being too thin or the brush being too full. Both of these conditions should be guarded against. The entire finish can be applied with a brush, however, the brushed coats are used mainly to tighten and set the nap of the fabric. After this is done, it is quicker and easier to apply the remaining coats with a spray gun. If dust has settled on the dry surface, it must be removed before spraying. By depressing the spray gun trigger halfway to release air only, the dust can be blown off the surface. The spray gun should be adjusted so that it throws a full spray about 12 inches wide when held about 8 inches from the surface to be sprayed. After the gun is adjusted, it can be held about 6 to 8 inches from the surface depending on the results obtained. When spraying, the hose line should be held in one hand with enough slack so that the stroke will not be interrupted. The gun must be in motion when dope is being sprayed. To prevent laps from showing, each stroke is overlapped on the previous stroke about two inches. Cross spraying produces a smoother, more even finish. The first spray coat can be applied crosswise on the surface. The next coat should be applied lengthwise or at right angles to the preceding coat. 
All spray coats should be applied in this manner, always spraying the following coat at right angles to the preceding coat. Remember, the gun must be in motion at all times when dope is being sprayed. Stopping the motion without stopping the spray is one cause of runs. Dope that has been thinned too much may also run. If the dope is properly mixed and still runs, the operator should cut down the amount being sprayed. Other ways to correct running are to hold the gun farther from the surface or move the gun along faster. If a run does form, the trigger of the gun can be pulled back halfway to release air only. A gentle stream of air played on the run will soon dry it. Too much air will spread the run. If the gun is held too far away, the dope dries before reaching the surface. This produces a dust-like finish called orange peel or pebble. The operator corrects this by holding the gun closer to the work. Another cause of this orange peel is moving the gun too fast. Moving the gun more slowly like this will correct the condition. Not using enough thinner will also produce orange peel. Some other results of faulty technique are pinholes, blisters, and blush. Pinholes are caused by water or oil in the airline or too high a drying temperature. Keep the airlines clean and do not spray dope if the room temperature is over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Blisters will form if the dope is applied too wet or in too thick a coat over a priming coat that has not completely dried. Be sure that the surface is dry before applying the next coat. Blushing is a whitish appearance of the sprayed surface. It is usually caused by too much moisture or humidity in the air. Blushing can be prevented by increasing the temperature of the spray room. However, it should never be warmer than 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Blushing can also be prevented by adding anti-blush reducer directly to the dope. This, combined with an increase in drying temperature, seems about the best method to use. If blushing does occur, spray the blushed surface with equal parts of anti-blush reducer and reducer. If the blush is bad, use more anti-blush reducer. Proper technique is essential throughout the finishing operation. For instance, sanding must be carefully done. Sandpaper coarser than triple O should never be used. Too much pressure may stretch or tear the fabric. Special care must be taken in sanding raised places, such as are caused by the rib stitching and tapes. Too much sanding on these places may remove the finish, cut through the fabric, and possibly weaken the rib stitching. As the finish progresses, a finer sandpaper, wet or dry number 400, is used to avoid scratching the surface. Toward the end of the finishing operation, the fine sandpaper must be constantly lubricated with clean water. This makes the finish smoother and avoids scratching. Some airplanes are finished in two or more different colors. The second or darker color is generally sprayed on over the lighter color. This is done so that the first color will not show through the second. The area around the second color is masked with tape and paper to protect it. The masking tape must seal perfectly on the fabric surface in order to make a sharp line between the two colors. Three or four coats of the second color are sprayed on, allowing each to dry before applying the next coat. The procedure is the same for applying three or more colors. Always remember, though, that the darker colors are sprayed over the lighter ones. Proper technique turns out an A1 job, and it isn't a difficult process. With practice, you can become an expert and turn out jobs as perfect 
as this one.